I'm back. Back in Faerun. And I'm no one. Just another half orc left to die on an icy lake if my old pal Roman hadn't showed up. Coincidence? Not likely. Whatever it was that pulled me off my throne, my place of power, and out into an icy waste, did not do so in charity. They've been feeding me power all these years. How many years? I don't know. No one ever kept count, and there were no seasons. No spring with blossoms, no warm summer sun, no autumnal earthy smells, and no winter. Only decay, and these strange powers that allowed me to rule a kingdom. There, my existence meant something. I had found my end of the road. I had a kingdom, and I was meant to live and die there. Now what do I have? Infinite ice and snow, rags on my back, babbling dwerger and... and an old friend. This is Red Moon Roleplaying. The morning air is no warmer than the night air. As you awaken after having spent the night at the home, it seems, Roshek, these days of your good friend Roman. You slept in a bed, a comfortable bed. Maybe it wasn't as grand as a bed you remember from before, but you also remember that that bed never felt like it gave you a good sleep. The sheets were always dirty. The ground, the bed frame hard. This was a simple bed, and yet it might have been the best night's sleep you've had for a very long time. As you awaken and all begin getting your gear and equipment ready, what are you doing, Roshek, in this little... You suppose it must be a sort of outhouse, infirmary-type building. It doesn't really seem to you like a temple would, but... Perhaps that is the humility of a priest of Ilmater. I uh, am looking at the things that I have here. The leather armor that I was given. I've not been wearing armor for such a long time. I've not really worn anything but, well, the fancy clothes that was given to me and tailored for me and somehow this feels more right as I test the firmness of the leather in my hands. I look at my hands and they're soft, they're, they're not calloused like they used to be way back when me and Roman had our first, well, Adventure, I suppose it was. Started with wolves. Ended up with me being lost and him. He seems to have found happiness. I don't think I should... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's best if I... Try to make myself out of here at some point. Either I'm gonna... End up in misery again or... It's gonna come with me onto him. But then again, if I do leave him, maybe that's just what I did wrong. Setting off by myself like that. I don't know. Well, I buckle it all up, I get it on me, I get the extra furs put on top, 
all the extra lining that's necessary here. I can't believe I'm actually going to take on all this stuff just to keep my body heat. But I guess these people know if this is how they live. As I put my belt on, I, it feels a bit empty almost not to have a sword there or any kind of weapon. I try my powers again to call upon a weapon in my hands and I I stand there for a while and I let it play around, I let it turn into a, a long sword over to a over to a quarter staff with swords on its ends like a some sort of double bladed scimitar it's interesting this this gift that I got to keep I just wonder what will be expected of me in return for this. For now, you do not know. But it is pleasing to see these weapons form in your hands. They will do the job. They are, of course, not as powerful as true magical weapons made of exotic materials. These are simply weapons formed from your own energies. But they do the job well enough. They do the job well enough. I hope they will. And I stand there and I'm not hungry. I I could have never stopped eating yesterday, I think. This Kaliana was looking after me, but I had to stop at some point and I would eat them out of the house. Warm food. Well cooked food. Feels strange almost. Roman, you too are finally coming into the main foyer of your home. Kaliana is quickly preparing a very modest breakfast. You were fed quite a lot last night. You know she put aside some of the extra rations that you were saving, specifically to feed your friend. She didn't complain though, although you feel a little concerned after all. Everyone in the town is trying to ration as much as possible. You don't know when the next true delivery of major foods will come. Villagers are still able to risk going out far into the lakes and fishing for knucklehead trout. Ice fishing, after all, is a tried and tested method out here. But apart from that, there is not as much as there used to be. No, there is not. There is not. This place is... is lovely. There's so much love here, but... But this place is dying. This place is dying slowly. I have to do something about that. I um, smile to Kaliana as I come into the into the room, and I make my way over to the over to the little shrine I have to uh, to Lathander. I get down on my knees and I I pray. Lathander, Morning Lord, bless our journey with lights. If not in the sky, then in our hearts. And give my friend Roshek peace here in what must be such a new environment for him. And protect Kaliana. She means a great deal to the town. And to me. More than I dare say to her. May the light be with us all. And I get up and... I look at... I look at Kaliana and I look at Roshek and I... Look at how prepared they are. How prepared Roshek especially looks to be for... The trip that we have ahead of us. Kaliana is busy preparing a few last minute things, making sure that you all have full backpacks with all the gear you will need, snowshoes, thick clothing, food. You are hopeful, Roman, that if this place on the map is where it says it is, that this journey might not be too long. About six, five, six hours to get to the mountains and then well, there aren't actually that many passes, natural passes anyway, that go into the spine of the world, obviously. It is largely an impassable mountain range, but there are a few roads, or rather natural inclines, and this one appears to be, this X seems to be near one of those. You think if heading almost directly south from where you are right now, six, seven hours there, and then it will probably take you six, seven hours to get back. Oh, we should be able to make it back before, uh, before it gets dark, I hope. At least, <laughs> darker. It is always dark, isn't it? I 
remind myself, yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? Correct. Looking outside, Roshik, through the windows, you would see that while there is a difference in the illumination, it is almost the equivalent of twilight now compared to actual night. It is still very dim outside, but visibility is a little better. It seems we always meet under these circumstances. Seems to be our fate, huh, Roshek? We have to bring back the light again. <laughs> Go Lathander. Lathander, indeed. How long has it been like this? Did you say? Two years. Well, I must say it's somewhat comforting that it didn't come with my coming here, at least. No, I don't think this has anything to do with what we went through, where we were. I don't think the devil is connected to this. Not to this. Uh, I uh, finish a cup of the warm whatever it is that Kaliana has prepared. It's kind of bitter, but kind of nice. I feel like my throat is clearer and less parched than it's since I remember. The air here especially is very, very, very crisp and fresh. I put it down and I nod to her and I say thank you again for this it was a nice breakfast. There is no need to thank me, Master Roshek. After all, I would do the same for anyone. As a priest of Ilmata, everyone is welcome and everyone will be given any aid I can. It's something I've been trying to get Roman into doing. I know, she smiles a little, that sometimes Lefander is a little less welcoming than Ilmata, but I, I think I'm getting through to him. <laughs> well, the the gods, they have their um, their own strong sides. Everyone is especially good at something. Uh, Lefander is good at light. I look slightly amused, and I fold my arms and I say, so that means that you don't cook for her because of your god? Uh, no, I cook some sometimes. Um, don't I, huh? Kaliana simply laughs and goes, My, Roshik's hit it right on the head. You really should do even more chores in the house. Yes, um, when I get back, I can get started. Uh, I'd be happy to. I'd rather wish that you weren't going, you know. I'm sorry, that's a selfish request, but I still feel Master Roshik here could use more rest, and I don't really see why you're the one who has to go and scout. Surely the captain could have sent some of the, the militia to do a similar scouting mission. Well, if the village is full of Dwerger, as he thinks, then... Yeah, maybe we good to be spared. You would uh, trust in Roman's abilities if you ever saw him swing that thing, and I point to... Whatever weapon it is that you have, wherever you have it. I have a mace. I have the same mace I had over in Barovia. Well, thankfully I have never seen the need for him to swing it, but... I believe that you know what you're doing. Just please try and be back as soon as you can, and be careful. What uh, can we expect on the way? Well, why don't you roll me a... Roll, roll a survival check. Fifteen. Hopefully, not a lot. Of course, there are various wild animals on the way to such a place. Ice trolls, crack cats, that sort of thing. Although, you know how to look out for them. To be honest, a lot of the geography of Icewind Dale out of the Ten Towns is rather flat. It is, after all, largely just a icy wasteland. It gets a little more tricky in the mountains, of course, but again, you know this pass. You think you know the pass anyway. So hopefully, if this place is situated in a reasonable location, you won't need to do any mountaineering. And again, you should be fine if you just stick to your route and don't go poking your nose in any caves. Yeah, that's right. Ice trolls, crag cats, but as long as we stick to the road, we should be just fine. Well, road, as long as we try to just make our way directly uh, there without going around looking for trouble or trying to awake something that is asleep, you know? Hmm. Well, I'm curious now. I've never seen crag cats or or ice trolls. And whatever it is on that map, it's probably something important. 
Oh, I'm I'm certain it is. I'm certain it is, and I think we'll need our strength for whatever is waiting for us there. So yeah, let's try to not get the attention of any critters on the way. I'm gonna start sweating soon if I don't get out of here with all this on. But I'm sure you know what's best. We should start to leave soon. We just need to finish up the packing. I think uh, Galliana has done a really good uh, job getting the, the the packing done. Uh, so thank you again for that. I, you're always so so nice to me. D it does. I quickly turn away, seeing that he's starting his romantic stutter thing, and I just go out the door to leave them in some privacy. I'm sure you'll be fine, Roman. I just will be praying for your safe return as soon as possible. Um, thank you. Y yeah. Um, yes. I'll be back, don't worry. I say, and I, I put on my bravest smile. Uh, me and Roshek, we, we've been through a lot. This is nothing. He seems important to you. I worry about him, though. I feel there is the darkness upon him. Perhaps he's not seen the light of either Lefanda or Ulmata. I hope he is able to find some peace. That is what I pray for as well. He is not quite the same as he was over there. Not that... Not that he was some bright, shiny package of goodness over there, either. But uh, there's certainly a darkness over him. But I think that's what spending that much time over there does to a person. Hmm, maybe, but don't forget that is your task to take on for yourself. After all, as a priest of Lefander, it is not just shining the light for yourself, it is shining the light for others. Even I know that. Of course. Yes. I will find a way to show him the light. With that, she bids you farewell, and both of you eventually find yourself at the gates of the town of East Haven. Again, East Haven is one of the free towns of the ten towns that actually have some form of fortification or wall. All the others are simply almost little hamlets in a way. You are met there by a few of the militia and the captain. Happy to see you off. The activity during the day is a little more than it was in the evening, but generally, Roshik, you notice that people really don't like to be out longer than they have to. Again, it is so cold. People try their best to get to the supply houses, do a few of their tasks they need to do, but they very quickly try and get back in buildings near fires. The smell of whale oil is thick in the air as well, because you notice that most people aren't actually burning wood. They're burning whale oil, which Roman would know is because whale oil at the moment is something that is simply in more supply than actual wood. Indeed. Indeed it is. That is a resource that, uh, well, we still have. And so, you're at the gates. The captain is there checking on your axe beaks harnesses. It's not a horse, Roshek, but it seems to have a similar temperament, although horses' heads don't move around as rapidly as this thing does. It's a little strange. Hmm. Does it seem fitted for a uh, combat? You think you could maybe make it charge at something, but it probably wouldn't be very happy, and again, it only has two big talons it's standing on, so if it tries using those in combat, it would risk your balance being thrown off, you think. Huh. It's an interesting beast. I breathe in the fresh air and I let out a big cloud of condensation. Alright. Has this one got a name? The captain nods. Yes, that one's a uh, Rudy. Rudy. Let's go on a track, shall we? Very well, Roman. You know where you're going. According to that map, should be near the the northeastmost pass. That's where it looks like it is, so hopefully you won't need to travel too far into the actual mountains. Be very careful though still, if you get stuck somewhere, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Don't worry, Captain. We've uh, we've got this. We'll be uh we'll be back soon. Um and if we're not, uh, you can come search for us, I say in a smile. We shall see. Again, I've already sent some people off to convene with Care Conig about what that uh, traveller said. We need to be on the lookout if there are Dwegar encampments nearby. Otherwise, I'll have everyone on watch. Good luck. Thank you. And may Lathander be with you and with the town. She sort of snorts a little. Again, 
apart from your companion Kaliana, people are starting to lose faith in the gods. They have, after all, not answered any of your prayers, and the only god who seems active, the whisper, of course, is Aurel, and her help doesn't seem forthcoming. That's the thing about faith that I've tried to, to get across to the people, that faith is something you have to have in both the good times and in the bad times. That is when we're being tested, that is when the gods test our love to them. That we remain faithful, it will be rewarded, but uh, they don't listen. They don't listen, and then they go ahead and do these damn sacrifices to the Frost Maiden. Hmm, yes. You didn't bring it with you, but even you have your little ticket. After all, a lottery system is what is being used to fairly decide who the monthly sacrifice will be. Yeah, it's an abomination. The whole thing. Well, it is time. And with Kaliana seeing you off as well, there's a few waves before, very quickly, all these shrouded, hooded figures begin to disappear in the distance. Again, quickly returning to their posts or back home as the cold wind begins to pick up in the twilight. Both of you briefly are on a road. There are, after all, some very basic roads between the ten towns, although Roshik, you would immediately notice that they barely are paths for the most part, and already snow seems to be constantly getting ready to make them vanish altogether. But it seems as if there is still enough traffic between towns at least a little bit of traffic, to make some pathway visible. Yeah. As we start out, it's with a bit of interest with all this snow, and I look down and I try to identify the tracks as we go, but pretty soon the darkness just brings a bit of gloom on my spirit. There is, unfortunately, gloom not too far away in my mind. And I try to imagine to myself what this place would look like in full daylight, all glittering and covered in snow. And now you still can only see so far ahead of you, and I get irritated. Your irritation is interrupted when you, Roman, notice just as you're about to depart from the path and begin heading south, that is, after all, where you want to go, you are looking at the great looming shadows of the spine of the world mountains. Even from this distance, they are intimidating, and you know they will only get bigger the closer you get to them. They extend all across the horizon to the south. After all, the spine of the world mountains pretty much border the entire region until you get to the Rigid Glacier itself in the far east. But there is some activity. There's actually someone heading on the road towards you, or rather, they would be heading towards you if you weren't about to then leave the road to go south. You hear the sound of dogs, or I suppose it's better to call these wolves in this part of the world, but these sled wolves, three of them, three sleds, are coming down the road. You can't quite see who's riding them just yet, but there does seem to be a little bit of a torch on one of them, giving them some light. What do you do? Hmm, I wonder who those are. Am I... is there anything strange about this to me? That there's travellers on the road? I suppose that's something that we do have from time to time, right? You do indeed, but it is a rare occurrence these days. Never mind free sleds, all coming quite quickly. Well, uh, I get ready to uh, meet and greet them, try to figure out what's going on. If they carry some malice in their hearts we might be able to find out now and maybe even get back and warn the town in case they're out to cause trouble Roshek, what do you do roman seems suddenly keen to stop and wait for these people to come to you hmm do you signal anything or say anything yeah let's see what who these people are make sure that they're not a threat to the town or, or have some kind of raiding party or whatever it could be uh, sure. I discreetly let a small dagger form in my hand out of sight. And you wait. The, s the wolf sleds begin to slow down. 
As they get closer, you think you can see two of them, to the left and right, seem to be being piloted by rather diminutive individuals. They're small, but again, you can't quite see what they look like. Again, they are shrouded and covered up with brown hoods and fur coats. But there is a larger sled in the middle, and that has a individual twice the size of any of these beings. They are riding along with two, again, small figures. So in total, there seem to be six smallish figures, and then on one of the sleds, a far larger being. As they all start slowing down, the one at the front, with the larger being on it, begins waving their hand, sort of like, Oh, hail! Hail there, travellers! Hail! And I wave back. Hail. Well met. I follow his lead, though I don't say anything. I raise my hand. I say, two brave young folks on the road, eh? You, you wouldn't be able to give an old woman a little bit of assistance, would you? Hmm, perhaps. Who are you, and where are you headed, and what do you need help with? Ah, yes. Well, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Velen. Velen Harpel. She gets off her sled. Again, the walls seem quite happy for a moment of rest. The smaller figures all are fidgeting a little, sort of chattering to each other. You can't quite understand what they're saying. It's just, it sounds a little bit like gibberish. The individual coming towards you is speaking with a in common. As they come a little closer, you get a little peek. You can't quite again see what they are, what they look like, but they seem humanoid in general appearance. Ah, well, I won't keep you too very long. You see, I'm heading to, uh, it's East Haven this way, yes? That would be it, yes. We've just come out of there. What are you, uh, what are you traveling there to do? Well, I've been traveling around for the last few weeks. I I'm looking for someone. Uh, I don't suppose you are locals to East Haven by any chance? No, oh, we are indeed. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. There hasn't been a traveller come through uh, the last week or so. A young lady, uh, a Nas Lantemir. A Nas Lantemir? Did I actually hear the name of that albino lady? You did not. Hmm. I cannot say that I recognize that name, no. What does she look like? Oh, a youngish woman, uh, big glasses, uh, probably carrying magical trinkets on her, uh, probably uh, looking to hire people for some sort of a possible uh, expedition of some kind, maybe? No? No. No, you have not heard this name, and you know the only travellers of late have been Roshek, and of course, two or three weeks ago, the wizard, who now is... Well, you think his remains have been cleared away by this point? Hmm. No, no, we haven't had travelers for a few weeks, actually. Um, you sure she went to East Haven? No. No, I've uh, been looking around all the other towns. Uh, I see. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. No travelers at all, you say? Okay, well, that's good to know. Hmm. You notice that at this point, that on her shoulder... You didn't quite see it at first, because it blends in so well with the snow, but there is actually a snowy owl perched on her shoulder. Again, the voice is sounding very feminine at this point, so you're thinking it might be a woman, maybe even an older woman. Well, uh, we shan't uh, hold you any longer, but you said you needed help. Was it just the information, or is there anything else that we can do for you? Hmm. Well, I don't know. You two brave adventurers going out into the wilderness, uh, raiding tombs, defeating monsters, saving uh, people in distress? <laughs> well, something like that. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Well, maybe. <laughs> well, no, no, I should probably be, probably be heading to East Haven. I don't want to be out in the cold all day. After all, this far north is frightfully cold, isn't it? Pardon my curiosity, but... She is setting up an expedition, did you say? Were you going to sign up yourself? She pauses for a moment. Hmm. She's someone I wish to find. Uh, she, well, well, if I'm honest, she, she, she has some things that belong to me, uh, and she borrowed them, but didn't let me know she was borrowing them, if you get my meaning. I'm hoping to clear up the misunderstanding. Oh, she stole from you. 
Hmm, I say that as one voice with Roman. Yes, correct. But she didn't mean to steal from me. It's all a bit of a misunderstanding, you see. But again, I'm looking around because I, she has to be somewhere in the ten towns. It's not like she's just ridden off by herself. East, hopefully. Well, I, I do wish you the best of luck in, in finding her. What do we do if we find her? Hmm. Ah, well, if you find her and I'm still in East Haven, bring her to me. Uh, you know, nicely, nicely. Uh, again, I just want to clear up the misunderstanding. What What did she steal from you? Oh, nothing you'd understand. <laughs> Small thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I should be letting you gentlemen on your way. I, I apologize for stopping you. Uh, again, no travelers at all to East Ho over the last two or three weeks. Hmm, interesting, interesting. No, no, not, not since then. Well, there was um, that group of uh, heavily armed uh, warriors who uh, decided to reinforce the guard against uh, possible intruders, of course. I say, and I look very certain about this, folding my arms. Oh, that's good. I'm glad they're upping some security out here. Some of the ten towns don't even have a wall. Unbelievable. Aren't they afraid of random raiders and all that? Well, I don't know. I suppose people out here have their ways about them, don't they? <laughs> I suppose at that. But, uh, it's a safe place to be. Hmm. Oh, good. I'm glad it's safe. Very well, then. She gets back onto her sled. At this point, you also notice the sleds are carrying not a grand amount of supplies, but there's quite a few crates and chests implying that there's stuff here for someone if they wanted to travel in the region to be reasonably safe to do so. Again, the little fingers have just stayed in their post. She makes a little clicking sound, and then they all sort of go, yep, 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 and get back to riding off towards East Haven. Oh, oh that was strange. Huh. What do you suppose those little f figures were? Oh. Can I think of any creatures like that that I have come across in my travels? I mean, that's one of the charms of Icewind Dale. You could guess anything. They could have been dwarves, gnomes, halflings, goblins, kobolds, little skeletons. Anything could be underneath there. Well, I, I couldn't really tell. It could have been anything, really. Let's hope that they, um, that they're just looking for this stolen item and that they won't cause any trouble. I'm sure the captain can handle them. Yeah, I just gaze off after them. And eventually, they are lost in the gloom. And then I let uh, the shimmering blade that I held close to my saddle disappear. And I uh, snap my fingers and uh, some uh, small colours fly out. Look at this, pretty lights. Pretty lights, I say. Oh, yeah, very pretty. Huh. I can do that now. Yeah, I noticed. What happened? What? I mean... Oh, let's go, shall we? On the road. Oh yeah, sure. Let's... Let's talk about it later. I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to... To talk about all the new skills you've picked up since we last met. And you, I suppose? I'm still the same old Roman. I haven't changed. I've gotten older, that's all. A little bit fatter. <laughs> yeah, you have. And I get my uh, axe beak, Rudy, to start moving. And you begin moving south. Four hours pass, riding far now from any sign of the towns themselves, running out into the snow. Again, the axe beaks seem okay with this. Their build means that they are able to waddle through the snow, it coming up mainly to their sort of mid-region, but they are able to quickly bury on through the snow, and your speed is actually reasonably speedy. Not massively speedy, of course, but again, your estimation you think Roman will be correct. Three hours of little but snowy drifts, white plains, and a twilight sky. However, at one point you do see something on the horizon, Roshek. You think you see, on a slight rising part, a little cliff edge, if you will, almost, a bunch of creatures. 
You have never seen creatures like this before. They remind you of deer, but they have some strange, massive antlers. Far larger than you think you've seen of male deer before, but the, these, these antlers are much larger than that. There's about 20 or 30 of them sort of just quickly moving along, and you notice there seems to be an old frozen stream where they're all gathering around as well. What do the two of you do? These creatures aren't barring your way, they're just a little sight you see to the left of the where you're going. Me, I'm quite pleased with something happening. First hour was, I suppose, all right. Second hour was so dreary, so boring. I even uh, started to think of things I could do to to annoy my axe beak. I was, I was, I was trying to start to startle it and see if what it would react to, like clapping my hands and and conjuring sparks around it just to check how how resilient it was. But after it started to try and throw me off, I toned it down a bit. And now, something finally happens. Ah, I look up at these creatures. They are being watched. Yeah. Quite a few of them, too. Are they some kind of deer? Yeah. Do I recognize what they would be? Of course you do. They're reindeer. Hmm. The Rigid clans follow them, follow their roots. It is their way of survival. Again, the Rigid clans being the people who were here before the Ten Towners, the ones who consider this their home first, even though they themselves originally were travelers to this land hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Reindeer, Roshek, reindeer. Well, the cattle of the ragged men, basically. Although they probably don't think of themselves that way. Oh, so those horns are for showing off then? Fighting each other, not really... Yeah, well, pretty, I think, I suppose. Yeah, they're very pretty. They're not dangerous, nothing to worry about. One of them, watching from afar, looks up. And you notice, this is quite a lucky omen, Roman. Its horns glow ever so slightly blue. That's quite a rare thing to see. But it does happen? It does happen. It is just a rarity. Perhaps uh, we are being blessed. Oh, that's a very special sight. Seeing those glowing horns there. They're perhaps wishing us luck. I have a feeling we might need it. I look at it and tilt my head for a bit, trying to break out of my gloom and boredom, and I can't help myself but to practice a bit of glee in order to amuse myself, and I I wave my hand a bit discreetly and I create a few musical notes that sound a bit like a, a flute, and I make them float through to Roman's ear on, on his right side. The sound is pleasant, probably, to Roman, but as it carries itself across the otherwise silent tundra, these deer, these reindeer, do hear it and are skittish. Immediately, the adult ones, or the largest ones, sort of step to the front, and the rest quickly begin darting, darting off into the distance before the whole little group are gone from sight. I, uh, I open my mouth. <gasps> did, did you hear that? What was that? What was that? Um, yeah. What was it? It sounded like music, almost. Hmm. Strange. There are many strange things out here on the icy wastes. Well, we shouldn't tarry here any longer. It is... We're losing time. I was going to say daylight, but, uh, well... Fine. Fine. Let's ride on. And so you ride on, and another three hours pass. This time, even though, again, little happens, the spine of the world mountains for some time have been looming larger and larger, until finally they tower above you, miles and miles above you. But you, of course, Roman, know where the pass is, and luckily it is still there, and the snow has not buried it too much, so you are able to quickly 
begin ascending up rocky slopes, but not so rocky that you cannot traverse them, and you begin moving into the mountains. 20-30 minutes pass. You have to slow down a bit now, because now, of course, mountainous terrain with snow is dangerous, but... You make your way carefully, but the axe beaks know what they're doing, and luckily, the road doesn't seem too treacherous. You keep checking the map. Eventually, you think you notice something. Some way ahead, you think you can see some sort of shape, sort of set into the mountainside. You have not been here before, so you don't know if that's unusual. It is something. What does it look like? Is it some kind of door or building or what what are we looking at? If you begin moving closer, it appears to be a great building, almost as if looking at a solid wall, but a wall that ascends at least two, three stories up into the air, square, chiseled from the rock. Next to it, as you sort of move into this narrow pathway a bit more, you think you can see stairs leading up, maybe about five minutes upwards before they sort of get to a point, but you can't see that point from here. But yes, you're you're at some sort of great building, great fortress, maybe even, but it's so chiseled into the mountain and the snow itself, it's almost hard to see until you really start looking closely at it. Are we where we are supposed to be roughly, or still not? According to the map, this would be it. We are where we're supposed to be, Rorschach. Must be this structure that the map is pointing to. Whatever they're looking for is probably within this building. Oh, finally. Um, My thighs are chafing. I'm not ridden in years. And this thing keeps bumping and tossing. Ah, it takes a little time to get used to it. Um, I'm sure you'll be fine on the way back. Um, well, let's let's move up as close as we can, I guess, and try to tie up the axe beaks if we don't think we can bring them further in. Hmm. While you're doing that, can everyone roll a perception check? Sixteen. I roll a, a one. Roshek, this is truly an impressive sight. You think to yourself... Some sort of large structure, that, and it's been dug into the, the mountainside? Oh, maybe it's an ancient ruin, or there's great treasures within. It's very exciting. Roman, you hear a sound. While Roshik is starting to sort of move forward on the axe peak, you kind of take in your surroundings for a moment. You're on sort of a very narrow pass, but there are a few natural, almost, caverns. Not very large, but sort of just like, you know, that you could dwell in them if you wanted to stay off the main path for a bit. There's a rumbling. Something very loud is beginning to rumble and screech. It's almost like the sounds of metal on metal from up. What do you do? Roshik is not paying any attention at all. Roshik! Roshik! There's some kind of noise. We, we gotta... we gotta hide. Huh? Oh. Uh, right. Huh? Where? And I just begin trying to look around if there's like pillars or something that's crumbled together anywhere that we might be able to uh, get ourselves in our axe beaks um, in order to not be just completely out in the open. You see an area just to the left behind some rocks where you think you at least will be slightly off the main path but of course while that is happening Roshek you was ahead you then see what is happening. When Roman says look up you look up The structure almost, now you're seeing it a bit clearer, looks like it's not just a solid wall. You're almost reminded of two large towers sticking out with like a little wall joining them, if you will. Almost like the entrance to a gatehouse, but a gatehouse the size of two or three stories. At the top, you see something happening. It's as if two large squares are beginning to separate. You see snow beginning to start tumbling down as a large cranking sound continues above you. Something is opening, a gigantic opening. And just as you're looking back to Roman, who's trying to quickly rein you to the side, something happens. 
a gigantic being emerges from this opening. A great winged being. From here, it looks as if they're covered in black scales from head to toe. They don't seem to have a mouth on the giant head because it's closed right now, but you see weird burning coal-like eyes. This being is gargantuan, and it spreads its gigantic dragon-like wings. There is a gigantic rumbling as it launches itself from this opening, spreading those wings, and takes the air above you. What do you do, Roshek? I uh, have time to curse, and then I try to get in towards the side of the mountain, try to get into some kind of cover. Indeed, and Roman, what do you do? You hear a rumbling. You know immediately. There's mount noise in the mountains. An avalanche is coming. Oh, we have to get away from the... from the mountain. This thing, is it, is it flown off? It's no longer looking at us? It doesn't even seem to have noticed you. This thing is gargantuan. It is already, as you are starting to stumble to the side, launching in the air and heading away from this building. But again, you hear the rumbling. You see the snow coming. You have moments before an avalanche strikes. Hopefully, just a small one. Roshak, we have to get away from the... the snow. There's an avalanche coming. Get inside! Get inside! These inside of the structure is not accessible from where you can see. I said there were stairs. They lead up for at least five minutes. Then we have to get away. There's no way we can make it before the snow comes. We have to we have to just get as far away from here as we can. Come on, hop! Uh, I say, and I, I sort of get my axe beak to move quickly uh, as I, I just try to get away from the, from the mountain, really. Ah, come on, move, you thing! Both of you roll an athletics check. Natural 20. 20. You notice first, Roman, a cascade of snow, sleet and rock immediately beginning to descend down this pathway. But there were those side caverns, those little outcroppings. You just managed to sort of dive your axe beak forward and Roshik, you notice and follow swiftly. You are a skilled rider as both of you are just able to get into a cropping. Snow descends straight past you. It's all over very quickly. After all, avalanches sometimes can be very quick. You take a breath. You blink. It is all over very quickly. Avalanches, after all, are quite sudden sometimes. Your axe beaks have been a little submerged in snow, as have you. But it was only a sort of bit of a snow drift coming from the main path. The entire path you were on has been swept away, but the snow keeps going and the sound dims and you think you can hear the sound of something again a lot quieter but still the sound of metal on metal as if one of you were to peek a little you have to kind of shoulder your way through some snow that opening at the top of this structure is closing but the avalanche has passed and you are fine a little little shaken and covered in snow but you're fine everyone is fine I hate to say it but I fear that might have been what Dearth Sunblight was talking about. Death on wings or whatever it was. Yeah, I think you're right. But the doors are closing up there. Can we make it in before they close completely, you think? Well, that opening you would not be able to access unless you had flight. It is all the way at the top of this structure. However, those stairs are still there. The snows cover them a little bit, but once again, there are stairs on the left that seem to be ascending, almost... They, they don't go up straight, they kind of go up to the left, then up to the right, then up to the left, then up to the right, and they do seem to lead to something. Well, let's... let's go inside. We have a purpose here, we have something that we have to do. Right. See if we find our way up. I start to brush off the snow that has fallen on... Uh, my clothes, there were undoubtedly bits and pieces there, and uh, help my axe beak wade through the large mass as good as I can, trying to ease it, the weight on either side. And you manage to get yourselves out of the snow, and, and the axe beaks are quick to get themselves back, and you begin taking them up the stairs. It's a little tricky for them, though. These are sort of quite small stairs, really, and they're kind of 
ascending them quite clumsily. Do you take them all the way to the top? I think it's good that they're close by. I wouldn't want them to... Well, down there they might be predators of some kind that would get at them, so... The closer they are to us, the better, I think. Uh, you're probably right. I still get off mine, and uh, I start leading it so it doesn't have to contend with my weight as well. And I do the same as we make our way up the stairs. The past few hours, as we have been riding along, I was even more bored and even more anxious. I kept making melodies uh, that I sent to Roman along the way, trying to keep up the the joke of some strange magic in the countryside. Didn't take too long for him to catch on, though. And I was once again getting more bored. And now that things are happening, it's taken my mind off of things for a while. You begin ascending the stairs. As you gain in height, Roman, you can't help but look back. You can just see still a silhouette. That being is heading in a straight line. Straight from where you are. Straight to where you've come. How do you feel? Afraid. Thander. Please don't let it go for East Haven. And you come to what looks like a single in the side of this great structure. A singular, large, black gate. You, Rosha, immediately notice there are a few slits on the sides of this gate, allowing people to be on the other side watching. You have arrived at the large black gate. Everything suddenly is very quiet again here in the mountains. What do you do? Uh, might be someone not watching in there. I say I close up to Roman. Uh, we found what the place on the map is. I don't know if we... What, what do you... What do you want to do? We have to go inside. We have to see what's there. We do? Yeah. Whatever it is, it's what was on the map. It's important. Right. I, I try to look around and see if there's any any other gate, a side gate or anything. Is it just this large thing? It is just this large gate on the side. It doesn't even look like a true entrance really it reminds you more of a back entrance to something this I, I i relay this observation to roman hmm huh. yeah it's a strange place i uh, let my mount stay back and i i try to advance carefully try to not be too obvious as I go up to the gate. Unfortunately, that's rather tricky to do. The gate is the only thing here, after all. There is nowhere you could hide. But you make your way to the gate. What do you do as you come to the gate? There it is, a black, sturdy-looking iron gate. You cannot see beyond it, but you are now almost right next to it. What do you do? Is there a handle? Is there a lock? Any kind of mechanism or anything? None you can see from here. You could, of course, knock on it. I shrug and look at Roman. Well, what can we do? I, I also look around. I try to push and pull at it. Roman, you're looking around. There's none. Uh, unless you get your climbing gear out and try scaling all the way to that opening you saw, but it's closed. How will you get through? This almost seems extremely impenetrable, if you're completely honest. And while you're thinking that, Roshik goes and gently starts trying to push on the great gate. And as he does, it just makes a bit of a sound. A little sound, but just enough. There is suddenly the sounds of gears moving. Clink, 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 clink. D -d 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 the gate is starting to rise in front of you, Roshik. What do you do? I uh, move to the side of it. And I... Uh call out a, a weapon shining in purplish colours in my hands it takes the shape of a quarterstaff weapon in hand you step back beyond the gate as it begins to rise is a portcullis and very quickly 
Roshik and Roman, you see beyond the portcullis ten armoured individuals staring at you. Crossbows at the ready. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played Icewind Dale, Rime of the Frost Maiden, for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. The music was created by Flowers for Body Snatchers, Ugasanye, Word Clock, and Metatron Omega, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check them out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more Dark Ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, and David Hogbari for their generous support. And we would of course like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, this show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. May Lathander protect you, and fill the world with light.